Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com. And you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry. And we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Well, amen. Thank you, team. Man, it's good to be here this morning. We're wrapping up our series on Ephesians chapter 6 that we've been in over the last few weeks. This is our sixth week, and we're going to land that plane today. But, you know, one of the things I know is, as I've been thinking about this, and there's two things I was sharing with the team before the service that, that are just really powerful. And, and one of them that, that I'm thinking about, and I'm meditating on this last week, is it's simply this. We know while the whole world has changed. There's one thing that hadn't changed, and that is God has not changed. He is still the one who loves us and cares for us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he's going to be the same tomorrow that he is today, that he was yesterday, that he was 2,000 years ago, that God is the same. And in these moments that we're having right now and uh, all the things that are going on, decisions we're having to make and, and trying to uh, follow certain guidelines and all all those things, but also just be wise in what we're doing. I tell you, there, there's moments, and I think over the last couple of weeks, there, there, this has provided for us a moment to clarify what's most important in our life. For us just to step back. I mean, if there's any gift that this has been given to us, it's allowed us to step back just for a moment to clarify what's most important in our life. What are those things that we can hold on to and we can trust? Those things that are simply not trustworthy that we can't base our life on. You know, one of the things was is we always thought the church had to be in a building to be the church. And if we've learned anything over the last few weeks is the church is still the church, even if it's not inside a building, that they're still being the church. You know, God's word gives us clarity in times of focus. And you're probably sitting there going, really? Because I'm still not real clear. Because there's some of you out there that you're still scared. You still have fear you yet to re-engage. There's others of you on the other side of going, we should have started meeting eight weeks ago when we closed, you know, and there's all this confusion and all that going on. And, and you're probably going, I don't, I don't see how this is giving me any clarity. Let me give you a, a, a kind of illustration. If you're watching a football game and it comes down to the fourth quarter and, and, and the team calls timeout with three or four seconds to go, each team goes to the sidelines and they meet with their coach. And after about 30 seconds, they come back onto the field. They, this, the offense calls their play. The defense calls their play. And in that moment, there is complete clarity on both sides of the ball. Now there's no certainty about what's about to happen in that, but there's complete clarity in that moment about what's fixing to happen. And in this time, while we can't have certainty on everything, we can definitely have clarity on certain things. And that comes from God's word. And in this time, you hear the world saying, you hear people saying, be afraid, be a very afraid, but listen up here. We just sang it. We have a great God who never changes. We have a great God and he never changes. And God says this, be not afraid. Instead, be clear on who I am. And so as we wrap up this series on the battle is not new, I wanna, I wanna close with, with the very end of Ephesians chapter six, and then we're gonna jump over into Acts and, and see this played out in the church today. But Paul here comes to the very end of this passage and he's kind of wrapping it up and he says this. He says, pray also for me in verse 19, that whenever I speak, words, look at that, words may be given to me that I will fearlessly, I love that, make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change. 
chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Now, we've looked intently at all the pieces of the armor, and now we come to the close of this letter. Remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about prayer, and we talked about acting up in our prayer life. Well, in addition to that, Paul adds a request. When he's talking about praying in the Spirit, he's talking about pray at all times. He's also here going, hey, I need something for y'all. I need you to pray for me. And his response to the end of this letter is, is he's working in Rome. He's talking to him. He's writing this letter. And he, he says, would you pray for me that I would use the right words, the right words to share, to share his faith, to share the gospel, You see, we're to share our faith, not only in our actions, but we're also called to share our faith in words, with our words. I think it was St. Francis that got credit for preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Well, that's somewhat like saying feed the hungry also and when necessary, use food. Now, what Paul's demonstrating here is he shows the importance of both actions and words working together. And yes, we should live out the gospel in our lives, but there's also those moments where we use words to express our hope. And we use words so people hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, without the truth of the words, there is no gospel. You're just good people trying to do good things. At some point, we have to use our words. And Paul is saying, would you pray for me that I would be fearless in my words? I would have the right words in that. You know, I think this is important that we be bold in our witness. And some of you have been so bold in your witness over these last few weeks. Others of you, you're kind of like what I'm about to explain to you. If you go all the way back to John chapter 20, uh, I kind of give you the the context of what's going on. Jesus has died on the cross and and the disciples have scattered. In John chapter 20, the disciples are all gathered up and it's after their resurrection. If you can just imagine, Jesus had been spending all this time with these guys and, and, and training them, investing in them, talking to them, teaching them what it means to know God and and teaching them how to do God's will, investing in them. And Jesus explained to them all through the book of John, listen, guys, you need to understand this is why I came. I'm going to die, but I'm going to come back in three days. Listen, guys, that's why I'm here. And the disciples had a really hard time and difficulty getting that in context because we have it in context now because we have biblical and historical records that Jesus did die on the cross and three days later rose again. People who witnessed him coming back, these guys didn't have that context. So this whole time they're going, no, 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 Jesus, you can't do that. No, no, Jesus, listen, guys. I'm going to have to die for the forgiveness of sins. That's why I came. I didn't come for the saved. I didn't come for the righteous. I came for sinners. That's why I'm here. And listen, I'm going to have to die, but God's going to raise me up. And so Jesus goes to the cross. He suffers brutally. Three days later, it's Sunday evening. And what do you think the disciples are doing? After hearing all that the whole time, are they out in the street going, hey, he's coming back. Don't worry. It's all good. He's coming back. No. They weren't doing that. In fact, in John's gospel, in chapter 20, verse 19, listen to what it says. It says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors. Hey, they aren't just scared. They weren't just out. They went in and locked themselves in a room. Sound familiar? (laughs) Because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly, Jesus was standing there among you. Peace be with you, he said. I mean, can you imagine that moment? Jesus told them he's coming back, but what are they doing? They're cowering behind locked doors. They had forgotten what God said he was going to do and did it within three days because they were afraid. Why is it that many of us, it took something like this to create a fearlessness in some of us? Why is it that we're not more bold in our witness? Because, see, we have the context. They didn't have the context of the story. But we do. Why aren't we more bold? Why aren't we more fearless, as Paul was saying, pray that I would be fearless in the proclamation of the gospel, of my words, and I would have the right words? I think one reason is, is many of us are afraid Many of us are afraid that we don't know enough, that we're not smart enough, that, that, that if we start to share our faith and somebody asks a question, it's like, uh, I don't know. And so we just, we just don't. We don't say anything. 
Some of us are afraid we're going to offend somebody or we're going to be too pushy. And maybe you grew up like that and you knocked on doors every day. And it's like, I don't want to be that guy. You see, in my opinion, the root of it, and almost every excuse we have, the root of it is we're afraid. We're afraid. I think that's why Paul said, pray for me, that I would fearlessly, boldly proclaim the good news of the gospel, that he would be fearless in that. And I totally and completely understand that about being afraid that we don't know enough or we don't, well, we're going to look silly or we're not going to get it right. Because listen to me, I get that. Just because I'm a preacher doesn't mean I wake up every day and my Bible's hovering over my desk and there's a supernatural kind of glory hanging over me every morning. I get that. Let's look at verse 19 again. Because here's what he said. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. And suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you. And here's what happened next. When Jesus walked in and said, peace be with you. This is incredible what happened next. Because all of a sudden, these guys went from being fearful and timid and afraid and self-centered to being bold, courageous, fearless evangelists spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. These guys were in one moment hiding behind locked doors. The next moment, we're out preaching boldly. Peter, remember that guy? The guy that just a few days ago, he cursed God. He cursed that little girl. He ran from that little girl, ran from Jesus, ran from everything, just abandoned them. And all of a sudden, this guy's out in the streets going, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. They couldn't shut him up. How do you go from being locked behind the doors, afraid, to being bold, man? The religious leaders actually arrested Peter and put him in jail, and, and, and they're still preaching anyway. They're preaching in prison now. And so Annas, the high priest, and you just got to love that name, Annas, and I'll just stop there. Annas, the high priest, says, you healed this guy, but by what power and in what name did you do it? And I want you to see Peter in the book of Acts, this guy who was hiding. The guy who just earlier denied Christ. The guy who was all of a sudden filled with the Holy Spirit. That all of a sudden when Jesus says, peace be with you, these guys became fearless. And look what he says in Acts chapter 4 and verses 8 and 10. It says, then Peter, when the high priest asked him, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Okay, let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the man who you crucified but whom God raised from the dead. What was he doing? I'm going to tell you what he's doing because the tomb was empty. Jesus was risen. He was defeated. The death was defeated. Hell and the grave. The very man who was timid in spirit was now bold and courageous and fearless because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you what we learned from this. Let me tell you what we, we need to embrace. And if you're taking notes, we're going to throw it up on the screen. But it's a simple statement here, and that is that we speak boldly about what we believe deeply. We speak boldly about what we believe deeply. And let me tell you, we do this all the time because Peter experienced the resurrection of Christ. That'll change you. And it consumed him. Later on, he said, I can't quit talking. I'm going to keep doing it. It was everything to him. We speak boldly about what we believe deeply, don't we? I mean, if you go to a great restaurant, I'm telling you, and it's amazing. What are you going to do? You're going to, I'm telling you, man, that's the best chimichanga I've ever had. You got to go. Chimichanga, that's Jake Connor. Every restaurant he goes to, chimichanga, it's the best. Some of you guys, you get a pair of shoes and they're great. I'm telling you, you'll post it on Facebook, Instagram. You got to get a pair of these shoes. Some of you guys, I'm telling you, you have worn Netflix and Prime out over the last few weeks. Amen? And I'm telling you, you'll talk about it. You'll get passionate about it. How in the world does a show called Tiger King get so much press? It's because we speak boldly about what we believe deeply, don't we? It's amazing. And so the question comes in, if we're not speaking boldly about our faith in Jesus, then do we really believe deeply? Do we? So here's a question. 
Those of you who call yourself Christians, and by the way, if you're not a Christian, you're watching, I'm so glad you're joining us today. Don't go anywhere, okay? And, uh, because we're grateful you're here. But let me ask you guys that are Christians, sitting in your living rooms, coffee shop, all over the world, as you're listening in this morning. Just simple questions this. How amazed are other people with your boldness in Christ? If someone looked at your life and they went, wow, that guy, that girl, that student, that, that they're fearless, man. How amazed are they? Think about it. And let me go ahead and try and kind of help you quantify this. On a scale of one to 10, one is unmoved, 10 is massively amazed, right? How amazed are people at your faith? Now, don't put a 10. 10 is Jesus. You're not Jesus, okay? Don't put a 10. Don't put a 1 because that's the devil. Now, you might be. I don't know, but don't put 1 either. So what would you say about those people that are truly 7 or 8s? They're bold, man. I mean, let me help you out. I, I bet you if you're watching and you're a 7 or 8, you're not watching by yourself this morning. You've got a Facebook watch party going on right now. Why? Because you love people and you want people to know the good news of Jesus. So you got up this morning and started sending invites out. And you, 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 you're right now having conversations online with them. Maybe, maybe you invited someone over to your home to watch it with you today. Maybe you talked to three or four people this week about your faith and God's using you in that because you're bold and you're just sharing. You're taking those conversations and turning those. And then you probably have a list of people you're praying for every day that you're praying that they'll get saved, man. Every single day you have a heart to share the good news. Now, how do you know if you're on the lower end of that scale? I think it's pretty obvious, but let me help you just in case. See, if you're probably on that lower end of that scale right now, you've probably never invited anybody to church. You, you, you're, you're probably sitting there and you're not praying for other people because it's always about you. You're not sharing your faith at work or school. In fact, you're not even sure your coworkers or your friends know you're even a Christian. No, they know you can go to church. You're probably lower on that scale. So that raises what I would consider a very important question. If we're Jesus followers and we claim to know Jesus Christ, and we have the same Holy Spirit that lived in Peter that created that boldness in him, now lives in us. How do we grow in our boldness? How do we become more bold in spirit? How do we become fearless? And I wanna give you two simple thoughts from our passage or our text in Acts chapter four. Paul said, pray that I would be fearless. I wanna point out two real simple thoughts in Acts chapter four. And the first way that we become fearless, number one, very simply, you ready to this? Spend more time with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? So simple. And here's what that means. That means we're praying, we're listening to him, we're in communication with him, we're reading his word, we're spending time with Jesus. Look at Acts chapter four, verse 13. It says, the members of the council were amazed. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. And they also recognize, this is so awesome, they also recognized them as men who had what? Who had been with Jesus. One version says they were ordinary and just simple, unschooled men. There's a Greek word that's translated unschooled that then the English word, you ready for this? It's where we get our English word idiot. Go look it up, okay? If you've ever felt like an idiot, then I want you to understand you're a perfect candidate for God to use. Amen? Amen. These guys were unschooled. Listen, God specializes in using idiots who've been with Jesus. Just ordinary people. See, when I spend time with Jesus, I walk out of my house or my office or maybe you walk out of your classroom and all of a sudden there's a confidence there that you've been with God. You've met with him, and he's with me. His spirit is guiding me, and I go out, and suddenly there's this, there's this sense that I'm, I'm bolder about what I'm doing, and I've been with him during the day as I go through the day, and I worship him, and I'm with him. And so when I see an opportunity, I take that opportunity that, that God's brought them into my life, or maybe I might say something, or I might give them something, or, or I might do something that's going to serve them. But here's what that does. When I spend time with Jesus, it strengthens my faith. It creates a boldness in me. You see, if you want to grow in boldness or to become fearless, spend time with Jesus. They were amazed at the boldness. They took note. They were just ordinary men. 
Everyday people who've been with Jesus. So spend time with Jesus. The second thing, you ready for this? Now we can do a very, very simple thing, but I'm telling you, God will act on this. And that is ask God to make you bold or fearless. Pray. We've talked a whole lot about that over the last few weeks. God, give me boldness today. God, make me fearless today. When was the last time you asked God for boldness or to be fearless? Have you ever? You see, this is what happened in Acts. Those religious leaders continued to threaten those disciples. They kept telling them they were gonna put you in jail. And you know what those guys did? They became more bold and more fearless. I mean, watch this in Acts chapter four, verse 29, when these disciples were under the threat of death. Look what they prayed. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants. Make us safe. Rescue us. Come get us. No, it's not what it says, is it? It says, and give us your servants great boldness to preach your word. Isn't that good? Not keep us safe. Not protect us. Give us boldness. Even though they're already threatening God, even though they're coming after us, Lord, make us more bold in what we do. Listen, when you spend time with Jesus, you grow in boldness. When you ask him for boldness, he helps strengthen your faith. And all of a sudden, here is some clarity and certainty for you today. Listen, when life is over, people will live somewhere forever. They will. People will live somewhere forever. And you may not believe that. And listen, if you're living your life that this is all there is, then, then listen, I'm really glad you're listening. But if you're wrong, listen to me, you've lost everything. If I'm wrong, I've not lost anything. But I believe, according to God's word, that we will live forever somewhere. And you're either going to live in the presence of God in heaven or in separation from God. It's what scripture calls hell. Now listen, listen, I'll be honest. I've never been a big fan of what they call hell, fire, and brimstone. I know some of you guys grew up on that. We're going to scare people out of hell, and we're going to scare them to Jesus. And I, I just, I, I'm not a fan, okay? So, but listen, listen. I can't be true to scripture without telling you there is a very real place that the Bible, that Jesus talked about, Jesus talked about, called hell. It's called eternal damnation. It's called a place of torment. It's called a place of outer darkness, of sorrow. And so we know that there is a place there. It wasn't designed for us. It was designed for the enemy and all of his demons. But if you and I choose not to follow Jesus Christ and not be saved, then there is a place where we'll live forever in that. But there's also another place. And words can't adequately describe it today. And the beauty, the splendor, the majesty, the dwelling place of God. In fact, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Isn't that good? I can't dream of it. I can't explain it. It's so otherworldly and glorious. I mean, the glory of heaven that God has prepared for us. You see, here's the truth. We speak boldly what we believe deeply. And a timid, afraid, fearful faith doesn't reach the lost and hurting and broken world. We have the one who gives life living in us to boldly and fearlessly declare the gospel. See, there's people in your life that you love who do not know the grace of Jesus Christ. And at this moment, it's not too late for them if they're still here. At this moment, it's not too late for you. If that's you today and you don't know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for you and died for me, took our sin and took that punishment for you and I, went to a cross and died, but didn't stay there because he conquered death and hell and came back three days later. And all those who believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be forgiven and saved. That's the gospel. That's pretty stinking good news, amen? That's pretty good. See, one day it'll be too late. And so we tend to think as we're hiding behind those doors, well, what if I don't get it right, man? What if I say something dumb? What if I say something, what if they laugh at me? Well, another question could be, what if you don't? What if you just don't say a word? 
Listen, I'm not telling you to be that militant evangelist that, that people see you coming and they turn and run, okay? There's both loving people and, and, and sharing their word at the right time and being sensitive to that. Because see, remember, you may be sitting there going, man, I'm scared, Ed, I don't know. Listen, we speak boldly about those things which we deeply believe. And when your life's been changed, you don't mind speaking about it. I mean, if you'll speak over a chimichanga, amen, Remember this, those disciples were scared to death and bam, in one instant, Jesus shows up. Listen, when Jesus shows up, it changes you. When Jesus shows up, it changes you. When Jesus shows up, it changes you. And in that moment, when they realize that Jesus rose from the grave, man, everything changed. You think? It changed. And for some of you, this is that moment for you, that you've heard this over and over again. Listen, we've loved you. Some of you, we, we love you, man. We hang out with you. But listen, we want you to know that there is a God. And listen, I know you got burned years ago or, or your daddy or your mama or your aunt or that guy or that church or what. Listen, listen take another look at Jesus. He loves you, man. We love you. But we want you to know the Lord Jesus, that you would believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? So that you'll be saved, man. So that you'll be saved. Because a God is a God, that great God who never changes, and he loves you, and he demonstrated that love for you, that while you and I were sinners, Christ died for us. That is bold. The tomb was empty. Instead of being afraid, you know what Peter did? That ordinary guy, Filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the way, you're ordinary. And filled with the Holy Spirit, that all of a sudden we become bold and courageous. Have you ever just asked God, God, make me bold? It's because we speak boldly about what we believe deeply. And here's what we believe. We believe that Jesus is the name above every name. That he is coming back. As a conquering king of kings and lord of lords, he is the way, the truth, and the life, the living water, the bread of life, our source, our savior. He is the one who died and rose again, and he loves you. And all oh, church, listen to me. Listen to me. I pray that we never get in this building again if we're gonna remain timid and afraid. I want a bold, fearless body that we would begin to pray just like Paul prayed in the end of that passage. God, make me fearless. Give me the right words that I can go and share the words of life. And his name is Jesus. Church, listen to me. Go be bold. Go be bold. Ask him. Spend more time. That's all we've been talking about, really, honestly. Spend more time with Jesus. And then ask him, make me bold. Make me fearless. Listen, we speak boldly about what we believe deeply. What is it that you believe? Let me pray for you. So, Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you that Paul demonstrated to us just that simple prayer. And, God, I pray for our people that they would be fearless with grace and truth to love people in this community, to love people in their community, wherever they're listening, that as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we would love people and we would speak to them words of life. God, give us a fearless boldness to love people and share the good news. God, I pray for that one that's listening this morning, that, Father, they've realized this morning they don't know you, God, would you give them courage this morning to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to grant them forgiveness in your name. And this morning, right where they sat, Lord, that they would confess you as their Lord and Savior. God, give them that courage to do that today. I love you. And look at me. I know we're done. We're gonna sing one more word, one more song. But if you made a decision this morning to either pray to receive Christ or maybe there's another decision that you have, there's a decision card popping up in that feed or right there beside your uh, video that you're watching on our website. It'll show up on YouTube. Maybe later you can go to our website and you can find it on our live feed page. 
But if you made a decision for Christ, we'd love to know. We'd love to celebrate with you because he's a great God. And he would lo- we would love to know that you came to know him today. Church, I love you. I cannot wait to see you. We're going to sing one more song. We'll see you next week. Hey guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ, or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you, have a great week.